Each of us has a choice. Whose descendants do we aspire to be? In the Gospel of St. Matthew, Jesus says, if we fulfill the will of his Father in heaven, we become his brothers and sisters. But let us remember that if we live lives full of evil, full of passions, we become the offspring of the devil, we become the descendants of Satan. We must repent of all the evil in our lives, even the very words that we utter, every word that passes our lips, we will be called to account for by God. We must repent. Christ says we must become the very dwelling place of God, that his holiness may shine forth in our lives. We must become sensitive to our inner voice, the voice of the conscience. We must satisfy every demand that it makes on us so that at our judgment it won't be an accuser. But our life is short and we must remember our death. The fathers teach us that until we have a true remembrance of death, we cannot live as we should. It's a paradox, but the remembrance of death enables the heart and soul to truly live. But even the church saints, the holiest saints, fear death. How much more should we? We mustn't be led astray by these false heresies of the Protestants today who say, once you utter a prayer or declare your faith, that's it, job done, saved. St. Paul reminds us that we must run the race to the very hour of our death. We must cross the finishing line. It is no good giving up and declaring ourselves victors before we cross the line. We must struggle, repent, put our faith in God to the very hour of our death and not be snatched from that path. The remembrance of our death enables us to live. We are called to be stewards. And so often we associate stewardship with this created world, the outer world. But true stewardship, more importantly, is of our inner life, of our life itself. And to be true stewards of our life, we must live it in remembrance of death. <laughs>